Hello and welcome to today's session, which is how to run a chi-square test for association in SPSS. Make sure all your assumptions are met, and if it's not, how to recode your data to try and get there. So, why do we use a chi-square test then? Well, a chi-square test for association, as its test name implies, is to see if there's an association between one variable and the other. For example, does an independent variable, such as gender, affect a dependent variable, such as their attitudes to climate change? But there are certain assumptions that chi-squared expects your data to have in order to be valid. The first one is that two vari variables that are tested must either be nominal or ordinal. So they must be, for example, male, female, or age. Now, if you're running data on a Likert scale, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, then you would not use a chi-squared test. A chi-squared test is simply for um, stuff like gender and age against categorical data, such as yes, no, or they've selected um, option A, option B, option C, option D, etc. It can't be like its scale data. Each variable must have two or more categorical uh, independent groups. So, for example, you've got male or female, or yes or no, and you can't have a male who says yes and no. And each of the cell of the cross-tabulation must have an expected count greater than five. Now, this may be a little unclear at the moment why that is, but when we run our test, you'll see why that is. But effectively, while we're here, the expected count is effectively... If you'd split your data up, so you had male and female and yes, no, then you would expect at least five males to say yes, five males to say no, five females to say yes, and five females to say no. And if you don't have that, at least five in each of those cells, then the test won't be valid. And also, the expected count is important to know, because SPSS, as we discussed earlier in our hypothesis session, runs on the null hypothesis. So if it's expecting no difference between the two variables, it will give you a value of what is expected to be in that particular box. The closer you are to that, then the more likelihood that there isn't a significance. The further away you are, the more likely there is a significance. Now, chi-square tests can be run while formulating a cross-tabulation in SPSS. And cross-tabs are a brilliant tool anyway for assessing the frequencies and percentages of data across your variables. But when you run a cross-tab with a chi-squared test below it, then you get some high-level stats, and certainly you get your chi-squared test, and you would focus on the Pearson's chi-squared row, and if that's less than 0 0.05 in the ASIB SIG2 column, then you know this is a statistically significant association between two of the variables that you're testing. So, let's go ahead and look at that in SPSS. Okay, we're now in SPSS. And here's a data set here, We're looking at some people's attitudes to climate change. So, for example, I want to look at if gender has an effect on if they know more, if they feel like they know more about climate change, if they're informed enough, which this question is asking here. It's a simple yes or no question. Do you feel like you're informed enough about climate change? And I want to see if there's a difference in gender there. Now, before we do any statistical test in SPSS, we need to state our hypothesis and our null hypothesis. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So our H1 is our alternative, uh, our alternative hypothesis, and it's typically the hypothesis that you want to find. So I may say, for example, that I suspect that females are more likely to say they know less about climate change or less informed about climate change than males are. And that's based usually off data that females feel like they need to know more and males, even if they don't know anything, will just say that they do. They overstate, they overstate um, that, they, that they do know more stuff. Our H0 is our null hypothesis, and this is what chi-squared test will run on. It runs on the basis that there is no difference 
between gender and levels of being informed about climate change. So this is important to know. It's important that you state them beforehand. So we're going to pop back into SPSS. And we're going to run our chi-square test now. So we're going to go to Analyze, Descriptives, and then Cross Tabulations or Cross Tabs. Find what one you need. So we're going to put gender in our row. So our independence, so the one that you're looking at if there's a difference, goes in the row. And I've already selected, but I'm going to pop it across now to show you the question. Do you feel like you're informed enough about climate change? Exact, make sure asymptotic only is uh, selected. Statistics, make sure chi-squared is ticked. Cells, you want your expected, because remember we discussed this before, about you want to know how far away you are from that. Your row, your column, and your total are ticked. Click continue, and then click OK. And now SPSS will run some information for you. And you'll get given a table that looks similar to this. And this may be confusing a little bit for you um, when you first see this. It's actually quite simple to understand. On the left is your variable, so we have females and males. Along the top is the question. So do you feel like you're informed enough about climate change? And this was a simple yes or no question. So if we go along the top, we can see that this box here is all female. The count 28 of them said yes, and 85 of them said no. What that means is 24% of females said yes, and 75% of them said no. Now, if we compare this to down here to our male counterparts, well, if we've had 24.4, 4, 24.8% of the females saying yes, well, we've got more males saying yes here. We've got 40% of males saying yes. And if we look across here, females, we had 75% saying no, but actually there's only 60% there and off there of males. So already I'm hypothesizing that before I look down to see what my test result says, that based on this data, females are significantly more likely to say no to this question because they're the highest group there. So we're going to scroll down. And we're going to look at our test results here. So first of all, we need to check that our test is valid. Now, if this is valid, because it has zero cells or less than five. So that's important. So our assumption has been met. If you have any other number in here, it means that your cell count isn't met. And you're going to have to recode your data. But for now, we know that our test is valid. We then came here to our asymptotic significance two-sided, and we go across to Pearson's key squared, and we're looking for a value that's less than 0.05. If it's less than 0.05, there is a significance between the two variables. However, if it's greater than that, such as here, then there is no statistical significance, although we're very, very close here. But statistically speaking, even though we're very close, and as we look back up here, we had 75% of females saying no, compared to only 6% of males, even though it's very close, and you can still certainly state that 75% of females said no, you can't say this is difficult, statistic, statistical pardon me, difference between the two variables. So therefore, we have to accept our null hypothesis and reject our alternative hypothesis. So, if you were to write this, you would say that a chi-square test was conducted and that between males and females or gender and if they're informed or not about climate change and there was no statistical significance between the two. And then you would give this as a p-value, so you would type p.056. Now, what happens if you run a chi-squared and you find that your assumptions have not been met, that you have some cells that have a less than 5 in it? So I wanted to see, for the same question, if there was a difference between age. However, as you can see, I have only had 4 in there, 4 in there, 1 in there, 
and then hardly anything down at the bottom. And that's because I didn't have that many people in these categories. So what do we do? Well, as I mentioned before, the whole idea of what I expected is if you split your data down, there needs to be at least five in each category. So currently I have a yes or no, but for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different categories. So splitting that across, make it easy for yourself and make it only so it's only split in between two variables. So for example, under 50s or over 50s. So if I look here, I know that we've got 33 here. Add that, add that. Well, that's definitely over 5. And then if we look here, for we've got 1, 2, 3. So even then, it might not work. So you might have, instead, 18 to 39, because we know that's definitely going to be 5. And then if we go 40 and above, then we'll have 40, 4, 5, six seven so we should then hit our target there of five so how do we go about that then well you know from your own data that for example here this one's been coded as one this one is two this one is three this one is four this one is five etc we're going to tell SPSS that we want to recode this into one variable and recode this into one variable so let's go ahead and do that so we click transform recode into a different variable and it's age we want to recode. So find it, click the button, pop it into here. I always recommend using uh, capital letters for when you're recoding data. It's just easy for you to spot. And also remember that in SPSS, any a name can't have a space, but a label can. Click change. So I've already got one of there, so we'll call it. Yep. All the new values. One is one, two, which is this category, is also going to be one, and then three is going to become two, so number three is this 40 to 49, because remember we're going to call this one as one, as under 40s, and anything else is over 40s. Three is two, four is two, five is two, Six is two, and then last but not least was seven is two. <clears throat> click add, click continue, click OK, and then we see along the bottom here that we've recoded it. So we'll pop back into our other part of the file. We'll scroll all the way down to re age recoded, you'll find it at the bottom. And then here you would type one is under 50s, 2 is over 50s, you would add that in there, you would put your 99s in there, and now we're going to run that test again. So we're going to analyze, descriptives, cross tabulations, get rid of this one, pop all the way down, age recoded, and then click OK. So as we can see, for this particular question, there's no. There's our, we're now. We're now fine. We now have our cell counts now to zero, but we have no significant difference there between the two. So just like before, we can now actually statistically say, because the test is now valid, that there is no significance between age and their likelihood of being informed. And that is how you conduct a chi-square test and recode it.